this Advent season at Christ Central, we've been in the middle of a sermon series using illustrations from a Charlie Brown Christmas. And if you've seen the classic cartoon, you know it's the story of a boy in search of the true meaning of Christmas. And in examining his search of the true meaning of Christmas, we find meaning for our own lives during Advent. So before we get to the clip for today, let me set it up for you. Charlie Brown is depressed. He can't figure out what Christmas means, and Lucy suggests that Charlie Brown needs involvement. He needs to be involved in, in some way, and that will help him. So she offers him the opportunity to be the director of the children's Christmas play. And he arrives to find out that the children really do need direction. It is pure chaos. Everyone is singing. Everyone is thinking of commercialism. And everyone wants a lunch break. Everything's going crazy. And all are complaining. Lucy is threatening violence. And she is trying to assert her power as the Christmas queen. Snoopy is lined up to play every character in the manger thing, including the Christmas penguin. And Charlie Brown has had enough. He decides what they need, what will make it all better, is a Christmas tree. We're back. Stupid Charlie Brown. What kind of a tree is that? You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? I told you he'd goof it up. He's not the kind you can depend on to do anything right. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. Completely hopeless. Rats! You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. What a treat. <laughs> I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Poor Charlie Brown. He was only trying to find the perfect tree for the pageant. Now, of course, all the children wanted a bright, shiny pink aluminum tree. And that's what Linus and Charlie Brown found when they went to the lot, Christmas tree lot that year. But Charlie Brown passed up all the shiny trees and decided on the stick that was the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. And, and no one liked it. You saw everyone called him names. They said he was stupid, a blockhead. He got everything wrong. And now Charlie Brown is more despondent than ever. I think Charlie Brown's friends were giving him such a hard time because they had envisioned in their minds what the perfect Christmas tree would be. They wanted something flashy, something bright, something that would make the stage come alive. And instead, they got a little stick with needles falling off. It was not what they had planned or prepared for. It did not meet their expectations, so they lash out at Charlie Brown. How often are we like the children in the Christmas play? We, too, have expectations. We have an idea of the way things are supposed to go. We want it when we want it and how we want it. We want it our way. We want life to be the way we had envisioned it. But too often, it is not. And we, like Charlie Brown, are left to yell rats or something worse. Life is not always the way we want it. 
I read the story of Jesus' birth from Mary's viewpoint and realized that probably life was not what she expected either. Things were not turning out with her expectations. From the engagement to finding out she was pregnant with the Messiah to a census and having to travel when she was very pregnant, it was not at all likely what Mary planned. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. Luke 2, 1 through 7, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word if you are able. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that had taken place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from his own town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So much has gone into planning the next 36 hours. You have come up with schedules. You have managed family and in-laws and friends and church going and gifts and food. There's a lot that goes into the next 36 hours. A great deal of preparation and planning. And with that comes a great deal of expectation. We have this idea of what we want Christmas to be. And we work so hard to make our Christmas look like that Norman Rothwell painting or a Publix television commercial. We have an idealized vision of what Christmas 2017 might be. But you have to remember that so much can go wrong within the next 36 hours. A stomach flu can hit your house without warning. A family member can bring up that feud of five years ago. A family member might ask, did you vote for Roy Moore or Doug Jones? <laughs> Your ham could go up in, in smoke, and that gift you spent so much money for could be discarded in a few minutes. Often, we come to the realization that our family is more like the Griswolds than any portrait that Norman Rockwell might paint. And our expectations fall far short of what, they, what we dream them to be. But of course, that's what's happening with Charlie Brown. The children have this expectation of a giant glittery pink aluminum Christmas tree. And he comes back with a stick that looks much like this far from the tree that the children envision. So they take it out on Charlie Brown. They don't realize that this tree just needs a little love and care and concern. They can only see what is wrong instead of what is right. We all have this idea of what the perfect Christmas will be like, but what we all need to remember is that first Christmas was far from perfect. It was not idealized perfection. Uh, we touched on it a little bit when I shared Joseph's story a few weeks ago. I'm sure Joseph did not plan on his fiance being pregnant when they were married. And Mary did not plan on bearing the Messiah, the Son of God. But of course, Mary was humbled and honored by that uh, by God calling her to fulfill that. And she said, let it be, Lord, according to your will. But everything started to go downhill from there. Rome called a census for taxation purposes, and Mary and Joseph had to travel 
to a, a faraway city in a condition and time when traveling was not easy. And she arrived there to find the city was full of people there for the taxation and for the census to be taxed. And, and Mary and Joseph were left without a place to stay. And so they were given uh, animal stall, animal stable, which was likely a dark, dank cave for her to give birth. Not an ideal place for any first-time mother to give birth, but there they were, and Jesus came. Now, I, I don't know a lot about birthing in uh, early Israel or ancient Israel at that time, but I do know that the conditions in which Jesus came into the world were less than ideal. You know, we don't know if Mary had anyone to assist her. I would hope so. But I imagine she was scared to death, unprepared, wondering what was going to happen, not ready for this baby to be born. It was totally unexpected for that expectant mother. Life is never what we expect, and it's likely that Christmas is not what we expect either. Life is not what Mary and Joseph expected. This is the world in which we live. There is brokenness. There is free will. There are things that are happening now in our lives we just don't understand. One day we will, but today we don't understand them. And in those times, we just have to trust God, pray to God, and rely on God, and remember that God is with us. I'm not here to dwell on unmet expectations. I'm not here uh, to, to tell you that, that everything is going to be perfect and you are going to get your Norman Rockwell Christmas. Rather, I'm here to focus on the message which the shepherds gave, the angels gave to the shepherds. That message of peace and love and hope that you will see if you keep reading in the Gospel of Luke. They said, do not be afraid, for I see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. We have good news in the middle of our unmet expectations. We have good news all day and every day with Jesus. My favorite Christmas movie is a Christmas story. Perhaps you've seen it before. It's the story of a young boy in 1940s Indiana with a great desire for a Red Ryder BB gun. If you haven't seen it before, TBS usually runs it on a 24-hour cycle starting tonight. So I encourage you to catch the movie. Anyway, uh, it's the story of this little boy wanting a Red Ryder BB gun, and it would seem that all the fates are against him. And it, as this story is working itself out, there are uh, several side stories happening, too. And, and two of those stories happen to be the father's great love for roasted turkey at Christmas and his great hate of his neighbor's hound dog, the Bumpus's Hound. Well, unfortunately... Those two side stories converge on Christmas morning. Someone leaves the door to the kitchen open and in trot the Bumpus' hounds, and they take the turkey while it is still warm from the kitchen table, and there is nothing left of the turkey except for a few scraps. Well, the father is left to yell profanity, the mother is left in tears, and the children are left shocked. And with this, the father declares, get your coats. We are going out for Christmas dinner. And so everyone grabs their coats, and there's not many options in 1940s Indiana on Christmas Day. So they end up in a Chinese restaurant. And there they are introduced to Chinese turkey or Chinese duck with its head still on. And the voice of the narrator is supposed to be the voice of this little boy after he's grown up, and he said that was one of the best and most memorable Christmases ever. 
It's the year we were introduced to Chinese turkey. And by the turkey or duck, the Christmas carols by the wait staff and their time together, they find themselves with a joyous time. It was not what they expected. It was not perfection, but it was Christmas. And in that last scene, you have all the scenes coming together. It's a family living with unmet expectations, trying to make it the best way that they knew how. I consider the Peanuts characters in Poor Charlie Brown. Even though their expectations were not met, the name calling, the rudeness, the hostility did not make the situation any better. It made it worse. It made Charlie Brown feel worse. And in searching for the bad and negativity, that's what his friends brought out. They didn't see the good and the joy that was there before them, and they too were missing the true meaning of Christmas. Fortunately, Linus will remind them of that, and we'll explore that tonight in our sermon at, at 5 o'clock. The children could have appreciated the moment and moved on. Instead, they stole Charlie Brown's joy and made it more difficult. One of the, my most memorable Christmases happened when I was about seven or eight years old. Uh, my great aunt's brother died, and so they decided to have his graveside service on Christmas Day. And as an adult, I can't imagine that either, but that's, that's what they did. And so they had, my aunt and uncle had a special needs son, and he couldn't attend the funeral, so he stayed with my family on Christmas Day. That year, I happened uh, to receive a remote control dog for Christmas. So my uh, cousin, at first, was very scared of the remote control dog, but then he began to enjoy it, and we played with it all day long. And I imagine we wore the batteries out on that remote control dog that Christmas. Now, believe it or not, it was eight years ago on Christmas Day that that cousin died. My parents were with me, and they happened to leave our house to go be with my elderly great aunt. Uh, my uncle had long since died, and she had no other children, so they went with her to, to be with her in her grief and planning and preparations at, at his death. And I remember kind of being disappointed that my parents were not there with with me, we're not there with my family, with, with my children. And then I remembered, Christmas is not about my plans. Christmas is not about my ideal expectations. Christmas is about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So while plans are not what we expect, we need to remember Jesus Christ is still Lord. And Emmanuel, God with us, is still with us. God is with us in the midst of the storms, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the doubt. Jesus is right in the middle of it. This is great and wonderful news for all of us who have unmet expectations this Christmas time. Amen. Let us pray.